Good day, everyone. This is Kim Coco here, founder of Swagtail. Today's post is about how to create a code of ethics at your yoga studio. In the recent Pirates of the Caribbean movies, even the pirates had a code of the Order of the Brethren, which outlined appropriate conduct, appropriate conduct for them. I've actually sailed around the teal blue waters of the Caribbean Sea and can hear the lapping of the waves, smell of the salty air, and feel the warm sun on my skin, despite the fact that I'm bundled up in the mountains right now with hail pouring down outside. Nevertheless, those vivid memories flash into my sense Juan plead to be taken ashore by Captain Barbosa in the first of the movie series. Yes, it's true. I just love those films. The point is that yoga professionals, in comparison to pirates, would seemingly have a stronger moral compass by which to live their lives and run their businesses. However, many times a yoga code of ethics gets assumed. Code of ethics gets assumed. We're going to clarify the need for one below and show you how to easily implement one at your yoga studio. Why have a code in the yoga field? By the very nature of yoga and its inherent eight-limb inherent eight limb path outlined by Patanjali, there is a moral code deeply embedded in the practice. The yamas and niyamas, which form the basis for those values, would seemingly transition without words into the profession of teaching yoga. However, there is a common phrase, making assumptions makes an ass out of you and me. Not all yoga practitioners or teachers or studio owners are on the same part of the yoga journey, and no two people would interpret those values in the same way. Thus, if you are a studio owner who wants to maintain a high level of integrity for your business, create a code of ethics by which yoga teachers at your studio are expected to adhere. This serves to benefit you in numerous ways. You build a sense of community by bringing the entire team on the same page. Invite clients and staff to live and practice an ethical-based path. Hold a clear vision for your business via guiding principles and action. Increase positivity at the studio. Not only can individuals improve the quality of the relationship they have with themselves and their growth, but they are encouraged to connect with others in a more meaningful and value-based manner. Suggested Yoga Code of Ethics. Here at Swagtail, we operate by the following 10 principles. These help guide our decision and provide a foundation to take action with confidence. If any resonate with you, great. Add them to your studio list. If not, we find as needed to create a yoga code of ethics that best represents you. One, speak with integrity. Speak honestly. Use the power, use the power of your words to uplift yourself, coworkers, clients, and the company. Examples, speak positively about those on the team and those who enter the studio. Even if you disagree with a studio decision, keep it to yourself and move on. If there are disagreements, knowing that going directly to the source of an issue can gain clarity for all and help the team move from the focus on a problem to that of a solution. If help is needed to sort out a disagreement, a conflict resolution policy can outline when and how to involve the studio manager or owner. Two, keep your promise. Speak clearly about what you're going to do and be willing to follow your words with consistent actions. Examples. When you say you're going to start a new class time or sub a class for another instructor, do it. Let the actions match those of your words. Life fluctuations happen, so if you have to modify a promise midstream, use clear communication to notify those who will be affected as soon as possible. Three, show respect for others. Each yoga instructor and staff member at the studio has a unique personality and skill set. Acknowledge their contribution to the team's success with your body language, as with your body language, words, and actions. Examples. Make eye contact with other teachers, staff, and students when possible. Listen to what they have to say. Tell them they did a great job, if it's true. You can also email or text them, too, when you notice a job well done. Four. Making assumptions can foster misunderstandings and drama. Be willing to ask questions of others when you are unclear about what they are asking. Find the courage to speak up for what you need and want from them. Examples. Ask another instructor for clarity about an upcoming workshop. Or maybe, 
or maybe even part of their sequence that they use in their class. If you're unsure about a studio policy, ask questions of the owner or manager to get on the same page. Need time off? Have a lot going on in your life that requires you to be away from the studio? Tell the owner of your needs and see how they can help be part of a situation, a win-win for all. Five, demonstrate loyalty to the team. Consider how you might lighten the load of the studio or make another instructor's job easier. Whether your actions are noticed or not, this fosters a bond of trust, respect, and appreciation within the team. Appreciation within the team. Examples, clean the studio well after your class. Put the props away in a tidy fashion. Wipe down the floor, or even change out the roll of toilet paper that is low in the bathroom. Even wiping down the counters in the bathroom each visit helps. As a confession, I almost obsessively do this no matter, obsessively do this no matter where I am. Little actions speak volumes about your character, and they keep the business efficient for the long run. Six, ask for help when needed. Be willing to recognize your own limitations and seek support from others. This could simply be deferring a question to the studio medical attention for an issue you are unable to address. Examples. Do the studio's computer system? Schedule time with someone to get trained appropriately. Have a student with questionable injury? Ask your mentor or other instructors how they might modify poses to help meet the needs of that student. Seven, infuse your work with excellence. This means doing your best always. Complete each project with pride, integrity, and quality. Examples. Each day will be different for everyone, so their best will vary. Be willing to go the extra mile high quality. This might mean taking a bit of extra time to prepare for classes. You could also schedule in more time for your personal practice or lend a listening ear to someone in need. Just know that doing your best is at the heart of any action taken. Eight, focus on safety. Complete projects with short-term projects with short-term and long-term safety in mind for yourself and your students. Examples: We all want our students to practice in a safe manner that does not increase pain or discomfort. Perhaps you take an anatomy training to deepen your understanding of what is going on in your client's body, or you can improve your skill set of yoga adjustments. You might need specialists in order to more deeply understand yoga progression, the body, or the breath. Nine. Harness your emotions. Elite athletes can set aside any negative emotions to get the job done. Be willing to set aside any personal issues and keep a professional attitude while on the clock. Have a fight with your spouse before teaching? Be willing to let it go and focus on the class at hand. Disagree with the owner's decision on the upcoming workshop outline? Don't complain about it. Keep your opinion to yourself and move on to do the very best you can with the decision that was made by someone else. You can always refer back to number one of the code and find a way to resolve an issue if needed. 10, strive for constant improvement. Use each opportunity as a learning experience to evolve personally and professionally. Examples, learn something new in the field of yoga. Watch a video, attend a workshop, ask questions, learn from other teachers while at a workshop, teachers while at a workshop together. Even disagreements within a team can help you clarify how you might better want to communicate in the future with your colleagues and students alike. How to implement your code. Now that you have some suggestions about how to create a yoga code of ethics for your studio, or even just for your teacher, here are the next steps to personalize it. Customize your code. Use the above suggestions, or those outlined by the Yoga Alliance, or your own lineage of the practice, to come up with your own priorities. As the studio owner, come up with this first. You might even draw on the values by which your mission state for your business and where it's going. Just make sure it resonates with your voice and your direction. And we suggest it be no longer than one page. Keep it simple and powerful. Invite input from the team. If you lead a team of teachers, then schedule a yoga staff meeting in order to go, to go over the code of conduct with them. Instead of taking a dictatorial approach, request their input. Let the team help build and refine the code. Then, after the meeting, formulate the code for your studio. Include the code of conduct in your teacher onboarding process. Ideas. 
Ideally, you have a system in place to notify new teachers at the studio of policies and operations. If you do, having each instructor read and sign the studio code of conduct can be done at that time. If you are just now introducing an ethical code to your team, have them read and sign a copy before their next class. I recommend that you keep a signed copy on file at the studio and give the teacher or staff member the other. Share the code with pride. Just like a wedding is designed to proclaim the marriage vows in front of family and friends, so too should you share your code of ethics with pride. Simple ways to do this include hang it publicly at the studio, maybe a nice frame where all can see. Notify team of the new guidelines if this has not been done with the initial onboarding process already. Email clients your policy in an upcoming newsletter. Post your ethical standards on your website. This transparency can help you stand out as a high quality code violation. In many versions of a perfect world, all people would agree on important topics and no conflict would arise. However, humans are very different and all growing and learning at different paces. That being said, there are times a breach of conduct will occur. When you have a system in place to violations, you will increase integrity and respect for you, your studio, and your brand. An established system will ensure all individuals associated with your business will be treated equally. Once everyone knows the rules of the game, they can decide whether to play by them or not. And you, as a studio owner, get to decide who remains on the team. Get to decide who remains on the team. The policy you put in place does not have to be lengthy. Here are some simple steps to do this. One, outline when and how violations are to be reported. Two, research the validity of the complaint. Three, speak directly with the person. Four, clarify the role of the person in question with that of the studio. Again, this might change depending on the violation. In any case, create a plan of action should your code be violated. Does your studio have a code of ethics in place? Leave a comment with us about your studio code and how you use it to increase success. We look forward to hearing your feedback. Again, this is Kim Coco, founder of Swagtail, with ideas on how to create a code of ethics for your yoga studio. For other business strategies, communication tools, and class resources, visit us at swagtail.com. Good day, everyone. This is Kim Coco here, founder of Swagtail. Today's post is about 